This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. How you doing, Jason Glick? I'm doing just fine. Um, though, John, you're you're not doing that well. Uh, a little under the weather, yeah. Uh, but, however, the show must go on, as they say. And uh, what exactly do you have in store for us this time? Okay, well, it's like I'm picking up with the uh, final volume of the series that I've been talking about for a little while now, called uh, Thermae Romae. It's... It's a series that basically like serves as further proof that the Japanese can make um, make a manga about anything, anything, because this is a series about a Roman bath engineer who time travels to um to modern and um recent past um Japan in order to get new ideas for for um for his baths in Roman times. It's Let's see, it's it's ridiculous, it's very silly. Silly to the point where you kinda expect um Graham Chapman to show up and say, Nope, nope, no, nope, this we're, we're all done here. It's like it's too silly, very silly. You know, that kind of that kind of thing. But but it's a but the thing is it's a huge it was a huge success in Japan. Um manga sold manga sold like gangbusters and it spawned um, very successful spin-offs in terms of a of a live action series and anime and two very successful um, fe- feature films. Feature films were so successful that apparently the um, its creator Mary Yamazaki was kind of pissed that she only got a pittance for her proper participation for these things. But I digress. Anyway, the series, like for um, everyone, anyone who hasn't um, um, written. Read the reviews or as needed as a refresher. The series is about um, one man, um, Lucius Modestus, a uh, like a bath designer um, in, in Roman times, times of Had- of Hadrian, which is about um, what like late late one se- late say late first century A.D. And he's let's say and he's and when we first met him, he's completely down on his luck. He's trying to he's trying to create a uh, retro style bath in the sense that you know hey uh, yo we want to like you know try and pre- preserve the. Uh, uh, you know, like the, the old olden days when he well, it's really just a cover for the fact that you know he's kind of run out of ideas here. So he go so um so after he's fired from his latest job, he a buddy of his his says, Hey, you know, let's go to one of the public baths just to clear your head. And um as and when he does, um Lucius slips f- slips and falls into into a bath into a bath and um then wakes up and then no then no he doesn't wake up, he he slips and falls into the bath, then he um then he, then when he comes breaks when he comes back out of the water, he's in Japan of the recent of um, the 1970s and seeing a like one of their their see so one of their um, like baths there. He's amazed by their so by their paintings paintings on the wall, the posters, the um, it's like their fruit see their fruit milk stuff like that. And so as he's and so as he sees these things, he eventually like you know slips falls back into the Japanese bath, then um, comes back. Then, then wakes back up in in Roman times. So then you know, he tries to um, recreate you know the, the, what he saw in Japan in Japan, like putting a mural on the wall, putting um fruit in his, in the milk served to like served to the bath patrons, and it becomes a huge success. In fact, like and this this keeps on happening um throughout several like like for the next several volume several several stories. One like at one, one point he um it's like he uh like he um he creates an outdoor bath for a council and winds up rejuvenating the man so much that he uh that he takes another wife takes another wife and hasn't and has another kid it's like i mean it's it it's fun it's fun silly fun silly stuff that um that works because um mon- um uh, manga kamari yanazaki she like it's just a, it plays it all as like general good natured um culture clash humor like seeing how, how um how Lucius is just completely baffled by, by this la- by the land of these flat faces and their supri- supremely advanced technology. How they can you know have aquariums in the in the walls, or it's like you know, I create I um, possess the power of power of lightning inside inside this strange flat device, like not really like, realizing it's a TV or something or something like that. But you know, just the f- join join the series is is fun. Is I'm seeing him you know just like travel to. It's like you know, just travel through time, and I'm taking the inspiration back and and repurposing it in like ways that you know are almost MacGyver esque in their ingenuity, from creating like you know, like um ba- like on um, bath slides for kids in the pu- in public baths, creating to um directing the construction of a giant um bathing village, um around it's like around the area, 
like it's like in a rural area of of Rome. It's like and, and or also just like creating like a small personal bath for what it's like for an aging like for an aging um uh, uh um stone carver friend of uh, aging mentor of a stone carver friend or, friend of his and a sculptor friend of his uh, what am i saying and um it's like and also just, you know creating uh like a portable a portable um, barrel bath for one of for one of Hadrian's um like um trust um like um um his his designated successor so you know things things like that i mean it's it's fun and it's yeah it's decidedly it's a, it's a decidedly specialized appeal i mean i'm kind of I'm kind of amused because it tells tells you a lot about both you know Japanese and Japanese bathing culture and Roman bathing culture because you it does feel because you can tell that she's I mean, as Yamazaki freely admits during the many um like many little um text pieces that um the book that um come after each um each chapter she, like she is a fanatic about about bathing and and Rome and so she just like she, she used this as a it's a way to meld her two two obsessions, and it's like and work comes off pretty well. But it's but a series that's like adheres to a formula. It sounds like you know it's like Lucius has a conundrum, wants to go back in time, finds something in, inspiring, then comes back to the present and and solves things. So it's a, it's the kind of thing that you know you have you're either gonna have to surrender yourself to to the idea, and if you can't do it, then you're obviously not gonna join me. That yes, it sounds ob. Obvious right there, but for me, it's like I was kind of wondering, you know, how how is she going to be able to suspend, sustain, um, you know, like like the uh, ingenuity of this over like extended period of time? Because like I was kind of the impression that this series was going to wind up being one of those um, Japanese tales that runs for goddamn ever. I mean, like we're talking about things like where they got a hundred, hundred volume plus volumes of like things like the uh, culinary series Oish- Oishinbo. Um, the boxy manga, um, like um, Hajime, no, J- Hajime no Ippo, or like the um, ongoing um, political assassination uh, uh, series on um, Gol- Golgo 13. So you, I kind of figured that, you know, we just keep seeing this like, you know, go on for like indefinitely, maybe not 100 volumes, for a good long time. But much to my surprise, when um, volume three of the Unprecedented Edition, which like these are two. Very nice two in one editions because we've got because they are pre, um, reprinted at like you know normal comic book size. I mean, I I, sh- I shelve these with my American um, trade pa- tra- um, hardcovers because that's that that's the size they're they're reprinted at. But they're also two volume uh, collections, so you're getting like so it's like you're getting two volumes of the pr- well two volumes of the price of two really, um, probably a bit more than that actually. But um, see, but the thing is. Um, I got this final volume, the third volume, which collects volumes five and six. I found out, hey, this is the last volume. There were only six volumes of Thermae Rome. And you know what? I am perfectly okay with that. Because, you know, um, towards the end of um, the second volume, we find out that, um, like, Lucius winds up in Japan again at, a, it's like at another, um, like, like a, a village centered around um, hot, sp- hot springs. But Unlike the, all the other times he's um, gone back in time, whenever he just slips and falls into the bathtub, he doesn't go back to Japan. He's stuck there for, um, for indefinitely, as it seems. But it's not all bad because he meets this um, cute Japanese girl named, named um, Satsuki. Um, and let's see. Yeah, and she, and um, apparently she's like the, uh, she's like the, probably like the, one of the few Japanese people who actually has a deep, abiding love of, let's say, of Rome, thanks to um, some words she interpreted. Um, she somewhat misinterpreted from her mother on her deathbed. A man who was, um, it's like, a, find a man who is um, Spartan and indomitable. And so she, when she found someone like that, it turned out to be Julius Caesar. And so she was fixated, she's been fixated on Rome, Roman life ever since. And she's also... Conveniently, the only person in the series we meet who actually knows Latin and can actually talk to Lucy, talk to Lucius. So, so it's clear that you know we're heading into a, uh, it's like, it's like you know, hey, it's a, a kind of like romantic comedy ter- territory here, and um, but it gets got a bit too ridiculous for me at the end of the second volume when when we had this one this one horse 
who was so impressed by Lucius's, um, you know, like uh, horsemanship, that uh, she she burst into the um, to the inn he was working at, um, looking looking for him because she's she's in love, and it's that was that was just downright silly, no downright ridiculous, and um, but fortunately um, Yamazaki um, doesn't um, dwell on that too much f- from the beginning. She just like, gets things right back on track. And um, things continue on with Lucius' adventures in modern times. In fact, we get to meet a one of the series' more interesting characters, um, Satsuki, Satsuki's dad, Tetsu, who is a who's one of those old. He's an he's an el, he's he's her grandfather, and he's one of those old old school Japanese guys who's really who's like who's like who's really who's really tough and soft soft spoken. Um, and he runs. He's a chiropractor, massage massage therapist, and um, acupuncturist. And um, he's guy, and he's just you know one of those old school guys who like you know gets gets the job done with a minimum of fuss, and it's like an, a maximum of skill, and um, and also the way um, Yamazaki draws him, like he's a dead ringer for um for Tommy Lee Jones if he was Japanese, but he's also got Clint Eastwood's um soft spokenness, so it's kind of interesting to see what her to discern her influences just from look looking at the guy and observing his actions, but. Uh, but as the um, main story for this volume plays out, it turns out that you know, like, Tet- like um, Tetsu, um, um, used work for some of his buddies to um, run this um, bad gang out of town, like, ba- um, like say, um, some twenty, thirty years ago. But it turns out the gang's back, and now they're looking to buy up all the land, like, in order to uh, make their own, like, you know, hot hot springs resorts. So, so you get like, like, so you get like, the, like some yakuza thugs moving moving in. And um, it's like, and it's you know fairly fairly generic kind of fairly fairly generic. Oh, it's like the the regular guys have to st- stand up to the stand to the hoodlums in order to take them down. But it does um, lead for a does make for some for some amusing scenes. I mean, Tetsu's and Tetsu's a fun fun presence if you like these these old these old badass um, Japanese guys. And it's and it's cool seeing him work his massage magic on it's like on, on Lucius. And some other characters who I'll get to in a second, but also um, it also leads this whole conflict between the yakuza and the gangs. Um, le- does get leads to the, probably the one scene that um, Yamazaki was probably been dying to draw since ever since um, she started the series. That we, get, we actually get to see Lucius on a chariot of sorts um, taking down the bad guys. It's like on. It's like as a as a speed away of Satsuki in in their car. She talks about how in the uh, it's like how in how, how when she was drawing that scene, she had like the, the chariot scene from Ben Hur on repeat in her in her DVD DVD player while she was drawing it. And yes, it is ridiculous, but it's the most glorious kind of ridiculous because it's, cause it's so it's so friggin' badass to see um, Lucius um, just just um, use his own. Use his own his own um, past style to just take out take on the good guy, the bad guys right there, and it's a great double page spread when you find out just what's going on, and it's it's a lot of and it's and hey, it's like I I enjoy this series. It's 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 enjoyable fluff, and um, if you haven't been entertained by the series, then yeah, I can't. Then this third volume really wraps wraps things up very like very nicely, um, because it also has some some nice. Twists on the whole time time travel thing, as we find out that you know that hey, it's pa- possible for other characters to right to time travel back to Roman time as well, because we see um, Tetsu um, wind up traveling back in time um, to, um, to like work his massage magic on on Hadrian. It's like, and also to set up the um, potential fact that hey, you know, maybe possible for Setsuki to go back there as well. I mean, it's the whole. The whole time travel stuff is just, you know, it's pure plot, plot device magic. It's all, it operates solely at the whims, whims of Yamazaki. But you know, it's like I like the characters. I like, I think that um, that Lucius and Satsuki make make a cute couple. And I, if the only the only real way they're going to be together in the end was just by through like you know the, like pure Deus ex, ma- Deus ex machinisms, then hey, I'm I'm cool with that. I mean. I guess like you know it's like if you if you can spend if if you've if you can spend disbelief enough in order to just like to accept the premise and if you've got an interest in what the series is talking about 
then you're then you're going to enjoy it. I mean, it's not this is not high art by any means. I mean, it's it takes like what. Like what seems to be like an unworkable premise, you know, time traveling bath engineer work, um, uses his uh, uses, the bath engineer uses time travel in order to expand his craft, and um, it makes it work through like through, through like um through time honored through time honored trials of good see of good humor and um and cult, and clash of cultures. It's like I it's like I generally it's like I generally enjoyed it. I mean, it's definitely not an essential read by any. By any standard, and um, it's like, and it's, and as I said at the end of um, volume two, I mean, really, this is this is superior fluff. I mean, it's like, if you, if it sounds like this, if this sounds like something that'll interest you, then, then I, th- I can certainly say you'd have you'd have a good time. I certainly, I certainly enjoyed it, but I'm also glad, definitely glad that um, Yamazaki decided not to stretch things out because I do think that six volumes, um, better. Better to um, stop something like this early when you're still, it's like when you still like you know, um, like, um when, it, when it still feels when there still feels like you know there's still some freshness, um, to to things and just rather than just you know complete, run it completely into the ground and make make a um, like career day in and day out of it. So overall, I was entertained and to be honest, like it does make me. At least at the very least, it makes me curious to check out the uh, the live action movies because there's a number of scenes in here, like the aforementioned uh, chariot scene, um, that I that I look at this and think, okay, they had to put this like in in the movie. And you know, it's kind of like kind of like when I was reading um, 20th Century Boys, and I realized, you know, that's that's like a killer scene right there that has to be in the movie. So yeah, so yeah, I'm definitely so I'm interested in checking checking that as well. And you know, hey, it's like I certainly certainly wouldn't be adverse to seeing um, more of um, um, Yamazaki's works um, in like in print as well. In fact, hey, hey, John. Yes, sir. Um, apparently, like this, I, I doubt that we'll be seeing um, like one of her one of her her later her later works in English. But she also was responsible for a uh, manga version of um, Walter Isaacson's bio- um, biography of Steve Jobs. Oh, interesting! Interesting indeed. Yeah, so but you know it's like to be honest, like I think this series um sold um what can be terribly described as sweet fuck all, because um volume, volumes one and two are priced at thirty five bucks, which considering the um production values Yen Press put into this, like I said, the hardcover, the dust jackets, the glossy paper, um yeah, but then then volume, but then volume three, um comes in at um forty bucks um even, so. So I get you get the feeling that you know, like they that Yen probably uh, kind of took may have taken um, a bath on this, but I'm glad that they brought it. I'm glad that they brought it over anyway. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I have for you, John. Um, any thoughts, or are you you conscious at all to you? Well, I, I I I'm I'm still amazed at the different concepts of time travel and what they t- and what people time travel for, whether it's an accident. Or if it's on purpose, it's always a very interesting story to me. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> you know it's uh, you know this one's just just off the wall. But hey, you know, time traveling in a in a in a bathtub, mm-hmm. yeah, or a bath. I should say a bath house. Yes, that's definitely unique. Yes, yes, it, yes, it is. And I'm like I said, I enjoyed it. Glad it only lasted six volumes because I can. Because it, it airs on the side of um, it's like airs on the side of brevity, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what you're gonna talk about next time? Uh, well, it's like depending on it'll, depending on whether or not I get around to, to writing up the uh, the new volume, the um, my copy of um, Garth Ennis's Battle Classics or Inio As- Inio Asano's um, Nishigahara Holograph. Um, it'll either be one of those, or you know something. Um, Something pops up in the next week that that strikes me as being particularly compelling, but we'll see. Well, stay tuned for next time, and uh, we'll talk with you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right, later. Bye.